Good morning. It's been a long time. I've been back now for one week. Tough week at work that was, getting back into the swing of things. Got a free weekend, so I thought, let's get out on a hike, overnighter. Back in October, I'd done part one of the Ignild Way path. It's 110 miles in total. At that point, I think we'd done 30 miles. I'm just on the way to go and pick up Stuart. And the plan this weekend is to walk from Dullingham through Cambridgeshire, a bit of Essex, into Hertfordshire, and finish up at Royston, which will be about 30 miles. We're going to attempt a wild camp somewhere, we're not sure where yet. The weather's looking a bit iffy, what could possibly go wrong? Let's go meet Stu. Away with my man Stuart. Give him a wave, Stu. I've known Stuart for how long? Hey. How long have we known each other? 1998. 98, was it? Tesco's night shift 1998. 20 years. Unbelievable. So we've just left Dullingham. It's a bit blustery, a bit muddy underfoot. So far, so good. Through Bower and Green, now cutting across the field to Brinkley. Wind's picking up, a bit of wind chill going on. What's it, nine degrees today? Yeah, yeah this is good. miles in, the rain clouds have disappeared. Feeling good. We're now about four miles in, seven to go until we get to Linton. We're hoping to get in the pub, have a couple of pints. We're still on track, not lost. But it's pretty remote, middle of nowhere. The sun is out. The outside. So it's now half twelve. We've got about four hours sunshine left, or daylight, I should say. Been going for about two hours, I guess. So at this point, we usually get fed up with each other. Stuart's hanging back, he's got his earphones in listening to the uh, Arsenal game. I usually step up, up the pace a bit, drag him along. <clears throat> You're probably thinking what the hell is all this, but this is my favourite bit of kit I'd say. It's my buff. So it's keeping my neck, neck nice and warm, wind out my ears. Love it, only a tenner, one of my best buys. You can't beat just getting out in the country, a bit of fresh air. So nice and peaceful. Beautiful. Probably here the wind has really picked up. Two and a half hours in, I think maybe done about six, six and a half miles. Just cutting across a field, which will take us into the village of Balsham, or Balsham, how you pronounce it. Hoping there's a pub there for a cheeky little pint. We'll see. You can see the pub, it's right in front of us. Fingers crossed it's open. Just left the ball, 
had a couple of cheeky pints. Stuart insisted on two whilst we watched the end of the Arsenal match. There he is, here we are. So that was Balsham, Balsham, Balsham. Now on the way to Linton, which is where we've ironed up to have a nice meal. Isn't that right? To Balsham we go. No, nope. to Linton we go. Forgot to mention, it's about three miles to uh, Linton. Probably here, the wind's really kicking up now. What time is it? Approaching half two, so not much sun left. Plan is get to Linton, a couple of pints, get some good grub down us, and then trek on and find somewhere to pitch up the tents. Well, that's the plan. It's just gone three o'clock. You can probably see behind me. Maybe you can't. The sun is rapidly going down, so we've got one hour till we get to Linton. We've got a dilemma. So we go to the pub, have some food. Trouble is, when we leave, it'll be pitch black. And ideally, we want to walk on about two more miles. So we're thinking, get to Linton, find a shop, get some bits and pieces, and then crack on and find somewhere to camp up. Decisions, decisions. What a scenario to be in. Race against time now, it's 10 to 4. We're just about to cross over the road that takes you to Haverhill. A1307, is it? It's going to be dark soon, we need to find somewhere to pitch up, so just popped into the co-op, got some sandwiches, a bit of junk food, set us up for the night, but we really need to find somewhere to stay. Ten past four, just gone past Linton Zoo, cutting across to Great Chesterford. We're struggling to find anywhere where it's suitable to pitch up. Temperature's dropping, my hips are aching. Oh, I think our backpacks weigh about 11, 12 kilo. And these big old heavy boots have been collecting mud all day, so it's been a tough one. I'm looking forward to pitching up and relaxing. 20 past four, I think we've settled on somewhere to stay. Middle of, middle of nowhere. Got Linton behind me. This will do, let's get set up. Pretty pitch black now. I've got some big lantern on in my face. Stuart's tent behind me, my tent give you a tour of the digs. Mattress, pillow, sleeping bag. And there's the grub for tonight. Cheeky red wine, co-op finest sandwich, ginksters, border biscuits, lovely. Stuart busy layering up, get these thermals on. How many layers you got on? Four, one. <laughs> Two, three, four. Sweet! We're all settled in. It's now six o'clock, half time in the Liverpool game. Have you got any aches and pains, Stuart? No, not the way. Huh? Just don't come to the We've got a long night ahead of us. Doesn't get light, doesn't get light till what, eight o'clock, so. Uh, Now 8 p.m. Wind's picked up a little bit. Stewart's in his Berghaus Peak 3.1 Pro. Chat to someone on the phone. The 
wine is almost finished. Behind us you can see Linton. Beautiful views over the village. But yeah, middle of nowhere. Stuart's already turned in, so I think when we go to bed too, it's half ten. Let's get some sleep. Good mornings. 8.30 here, we're packed up. A little bit of rain this morning. It wasn't that cold last night, was it, Brownie? Hey. It wasn't that cold, was it? No, it was windy. A little bit windy, but it's all about the layering system. You get that right and you'll be fine. So we've got about two and a half miles across this field, which will take us into Great Chesterford, where we think there's a lovely little bakery. So, fat coffee, donuts, bacon roll, cookies, oh. To the bakery. Just gone through about a 20 minute spell of rain, but looking up, seems to be improving. That's one of Stuart's jobs when we come away, is on the weather forecast and the football scores, where I, I tend to navigate, take a few pictures and videos. Um, thankfully, we're on a, what looks like a farmer's road at the moment, so it's lovely underfoot. Better than on them bloody muddy fields where your feet are sliding everywhere. What do you reckon? One mile to go? Does it say? We've got to go over there, have we? Oh man, back on the fields we go. About a three mile walk just brought us into Great Chesterford. We stopped at a lovely bakery, coffee, bacon and sausage roll, sausage roll each. Beautiful. Stocked up with all nice cookies and croissants for our journey ahead. We've now got 12 and a half miles to go. Um, it's nearly 11 o'clock, so probably gonna get to Royston, hopefully for about three o'clock. Let's see. Sky's looking a little bit iffy. Hopefully no more rain. Fingers crossed. When you leave Great Chesterford, there's a bit of a climb ahead of us, so quite a steep one. After that, I think it's quite plain sailing. So catch you in a bit. Just crossed over the M11 back there. We're now on a path. We've got about two miles. Takes us into a small village called Strettle. Strettle. Not much there, I expect. Hopefully a little bench where we can have a little break. Wind's picked up, cutting right into us. Beautiful fresh air into the lungs. About halfway across this field now, and you can probably hear the wind blowing right at us. Middle of nowhere here. The trouble with crossing these sort of fields is your boots just clog up with mud and they weigh a ton, so your legs. Aching, aching, aching. I think I've got a blister situation occurring on my little pinky. I'm going to have to address that later. Oh, I think it's about 8 degrees, but wind chill. Probably closer to 5, 6 degrees possibly. I think two weeks ago I was sat on the beach, sipping a cocktail. Now life changes, hey. Finally off that field, back on the road. Both taking some painkillers. Got pains in my hips and my blisters. Stuart's just aching all over. The sun's out, or it was. Wind has calmed down, thank God. Just more like it. Just stretch all we go. Made it through Strettle. Nothing there of note, pretty boring. So we've got nine miles to go. 
I think we've got about a mile until we get to a village called Elmden, where we're going to have a little pit stop, have a 10 minute break, and then hit the trail again. <laughs> So we just stopped for about 25 minutes in the village of Elmden, just over halfway. I think we've got about 7.5 miles to go. We're now back on a trail. This path will take us into Crishall, and then the next village after that is Hayden. And then I think after that it's quite remote until we hit Royston. Temperature's dipped a little bit, I think, so I have to put my jacket on, warm up a little bit. Off we go. Half past one, we've just passed through the villages of Chisnell and Hayden. I was hoping there'd be a little pub at Hayden, but never mind. So, got a little over five miles to go. We're getting there, slowly but surely. I'll go and get another one. <laughs> you go. And the one complaint about this route is there's been no benches, but luckily, check this out. Stuart has found a couple of discarded <laughs> chairs in the hedge, so we're just gonna chill out here for 10 minutes, put our feet up, and then get crack onto Royston. Happy days. Okay, so we're back on foot again. According to my app, View Ranger, we've got about 3.6 miles to go. Whoever left them chairs and fly tips them, thank you very much. That's rather nice, just relaxing there. But onwards we go. Let's get this trek done. Like I say, I think that's 29 miles in total, so we're both feeling quite good actually. This is our first long distance little walk for a few months. So get into Royston, find a taxi, get a lift back to Stuart's house, that's the plan. Well, we've made it to Royston. We're just waiting now for our taxi. <sighs> Back in the car, absolutely shattered. Hamstrings are tight as hell. My toes, I'm dreading taking my socks off because I'm gonna have blisters everywhere, I should imagine. <sighs> Not the most exciting route, but what the lack of sunshine this, this time of year, it was something local we could do, so. We had some spare time, so we thought, let's get out and explore. So that was part two of the Icknield Way. I think I've got about 35 miles left on that trail, so might leave it to a British summer time, get out and complete it. So I'm now just gonna get back, get home, hang the tent out, dry that out, because that's all soaking wet get myself in the shower for a good scrub. I'm absolutely starving as well, so until next time, goodbye.